Hello folks, in this video we will learn about abstraction which is one of the four essential object oriented programming concepts. Now abstraction is a very cool concept and we will see this by an example. So first of all I'll create another class and as usual I'll name the class Pokemon. Now the Pokemon will have one move and it will also have one method. So let's name this method as attack and I'll pass the move. Now I won't complete this method and I will create two more Pokemon. So let's create Charizard extends Pokemon and Charizard will also have access to the move and the method. So here I will write public void attack and I'll do one method overriding and I'll pass the move and let me simply write uh, Charizard use and whatever is the move. And now I will create another class and let's create this class uh, let's name this class as Mewtwo and the same thing Mewtwo will have attack and I'll write Mewtwo use and whatever is the attack now I'll come back to my main method and here I will create one Charizard and one Mewtwo so first of all let me simply create Mewtwo and let's name the object as Mewtwo equals to new Mewtwo and now uh, let me give a move so mu2.move equals to shadow ball and then if I simply do mu2.attack and I'll pass my mu2.move what will happen so let me write the program so we are getting mu2 use shadow ball now we can do the same for Charizard so let me just create one Charizard object Charizard Charizard equals to new Charizard and then uh, we can simply do uh, Charizard dot move let's give the move as flamethrower and uh, we can simply do now Charizard dot attack and we will pass the move Charizard dot move and now if I execute we will get both so we are getting Mew to use Shadow Ball and Charizard use Flamethrower. Now one thing to note here is even if I write something over here, so let's write SOUT and then Pokemon attacked. Will this be executed or not? And it won't be executed because the child class will override the method of the parent class. And in situations like this, uh, we can simply make the class as an abstract class. So the abstract class Pokemon is only an idea which has a string move and an attack method but this is not being implemented directly. It's being implemented by its children Charizard and Mewtwo. So this is the basic concept of abstraction. Now we have an attack method but we can also make this method as abstract. So let me simply delete these things because this will not be implemented and let's make this method as an abstract method. So the child classes will have access to these things but these things cannot be implemented directly. Now there is also a way to implement the things inside the abstract class uh, but not directly but there is a different way we can do this and the first thing we can do is create one constructor and inside let me write who is that Pokemon and now if I run this thing we will see that we actually are printing who is that Pokemon and why is this happening this is happening because whenever we are creating the Mewtwo and the Charizard object these objects have access to the abstract class because it's a parent class and uh, then by default it's uh, printing out the constructor so similarly inside the charizard and mewtwo we can print few more things inside a constructor and this is something that is called constructor chaining so first of all it will have access to the parent class constructor and then the child class so let's write it's charizard and similarly also for the mewtwo let's simply print this thing and uh, here let's print its mutual and uh, now let me write run this program and we have all these things so who is that pokemon it's mutual then mutual use shadow ball and then who is that pokemon it's charizard then charizard use slim throw so this is how we can access uh, whatever methods we are writing inside our abstract class also and there is a different way to do this thing and when we are writing a method with a different name so let's say void description and uh, let's print out something let's print pokemon means pocket monsters and now 
uh, both the mu2 and the charizard will have access to this method because this method is coming from the parent class so from charizard dot we can execute the description so now if i run this thing and in the end we are getting pokemon means pocket monsters so this is how it is having access to the methods of the abstract class also so this is a uh, one form of abstraction but this is not pure abstraction because uh, we can still do things inside our abstract class so for pure abstraction we use interfaces and to do that let me create another file called interfaces.java and here we will see how we can actually deal with interfaces so let me first uh, create another method public static void main string arguments and here we will write few things so first of all uh, in place of the abstract class here we will create one interface called pokemon and as usual the pokemon will have an void attack and then we will create some child classes so let's create one class of tyranitar and for interfaces we write implements we don't extend it because interfaces are not really classes it's similar to class but here we only declare what are the things we are using we are not really accessing it in any way so implements uh, pokemon and then inside i will have one string name which is the name of the pokemon and a string move also which is the move and now i will write one method so let me write public void attack and i'll simply uh, do because i have access to the name and the move also name use and then the move that's it and uh, then let me simply copy this thing and here in place of tyranitar let me create another class rayquaza and uh, now inside our main method let me simply create one tyranitar and one rayquaza so tyranitar and let's name the object as tyranitar equals to new tyranitar let me give the name equals to tyranitar and let me also give the move let's give the move earthquake and now uh, we can try to access the attack so tyranitar dot attack and we will get it so let me simply execute this thing so tyranitar use earthquake and uh, we can also create the requesa and uh, everything will work like that now one more thing uh, we should note is that inside our interface anything we declare that is in the finally state so that is in the final state uh, and that means this cannot be changed so let's say let me create one generation 2 so this will always be true like we cannot really change this thing later inside our like tyranitar class so here if i try to do this thing let's say tyranitar dot gen equals to 3 uh, it will throw one error and what does it say the static field pokemon gen should be access accessed in a static way so this is actually static and final so this cannot be changed so let's uh, try to write another method inside our like tyranitar let's name this method as public void info and uh, inside what we can simply write is let's say name is from gen and then the gen and now if i execute what do we get we get tyranitar okay we have to also execute it here so tyranitar dot info and now if i execute we are getting that tyranitar is from gen 2 and which is correct but now let's say i copy this thing inside the requaza and what will happen so i have to create requaza 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 equals to new requaza and here let me write requaza dot name equals to requaza then requaza dot move let's give the move fly i think we get it by default in pokemon emerald and then let me simply try to execute requaza dot attack and requaza dot info and we will be getting 
that Rayquaza is from generation 2. So there is no way we can change this to generation 3. So Rayquaza dot gen equals to 3. We cannot do this thing because this is in static and finally. And uh, but for the general class, that is uh, whenever we are doing an abstraction, here if we try to do this thing, this is actually possible. So here let me write one gen equals to 2. So this is not in the final state. So here, let if I try to do, let's say, mu2 dot gen equals to 1, we can actually do this thing. So this is the basic difference between abstraction and pure abstraction. And uh, this is in general the basic concept of abstraction. So we are able to create an abstract class or an interface and we can define few concepts and variables. And then in the child classes, uh, we can implement these things. So that's it for this video. And you can also find all of this code in the GitHub repo link I have kept in the description below. So once again, thanks for watching and bye-bye.